As president and CEO of the Natural Resource Governance Institute, you have launched uh, in uh, August, or in June, July, August uh, 2017, a novel index. It's the govern Resource Governance Index, which measures the quality of governance in the extractive sector in more than 80 countries, both industrialized and developing countries. Could you tell us what are the main takeaways, especially what are maybe the most unexpected findings, and from there, what are the policy implications? Okay. The main finding is, is rather sobering, that we have a major challenge around the world in our hands. Of these <coughs> over 80 countries that we have assessed in this report and in this index, over 85% of them are not performing satisfactorily. Um, in fact, many very much, uh, not just mediocre, but very poor performance, and some ev even failing in terms of the performance mm -hmm. regarding governance, transparency, and accountability in natural resources. So this is a major challenge ahead. The main factors that we find that appear to play a very important role in, in that, um, one is in fact, the absence of sufficient civic space. The civil society is not sufficiently empowered and allowed to operate in many countries. Civic space is closing in many countries. Voice, democratic accountability are a challenge in many of those countries. And we find in those countries where there is insufficient civic space, accountability, transparency, better governance does not take place. Second, corruption is also a very important uh, factor. One of the key findings in the, of the index is that some countries, thanks to many initiatives, including EITI, the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, Publish What You Pay, and others, are adopting regulations, laws. But what's in the law and what's adopted doesn't necessarily get implemented. Mm. So we call it that an implementation gap or implementation deficit. And that deficit is associated in many cases with corruption. In highly corrupt places, the implementation just doesn't take place. So they may adopt it, and it may be in the books, but it doesn't uh, take place. But another very important finding is that it's not all the responsibility of governments. The enterprise sector plays a very important role. We find serious deficiencies with state-owned enterprises, but there's also a responsibility which is pending of, of many in the IOCs, in the international oil companies, also mining companies, as well as in the trading companies that is still pending. I have a, a further question. Since you have been actually pioneering work on trying to measure governance, institutions and corruption in the developing world for the past few decades. Uh, what are the top priorities today when you see the progresses or the lack of progresses uh, over the past few decades? And what could be the specific contribution from the research community, from academia? There have been so many initiatives, so many interventions over the years regarding governance and regarding anti-corruption. What works and what doesn't? Of course, we learn from experience, we have done a bit of research, but not sufficiently. It has been studied what is working and what, uh, what is not, particularly given the fact that the face and dimensions of corruption and of other challenges of governance has changed over time. Let me give one example. A lot of the focus many years ago, and that's how the research and the work and the estimation of corruption, starting with petty corruption, administrative bribes, petty bribery, for a traffic license, for this and that. And it was very difficult to measure the grand corruption. Mm. As we started getting into that, we saw that there were many different forms of high level and grand corruption. One very important form that with other colleagues have been very involved over the years is what we call state capture. 
is how the elites in countries basically mm. influence all the rules of the, the game and capture the institutions of the state, the laws, the regulations, and, and the policies. There's a lot of more research that can be done about those higher level corruption forms. A lot has been done about petty corruption and so on. But that's not where most of the problem lies, lies now. What we are witnessing in Latin America because of the a Petrobras, Odebrecht type of scandals. It's a different type of corruption which has now been internalized. It's very high level. It, uh, it forms that in a less globalized economy about 20 years ago, less of a globalized world didn't exist. So there's a lot of fertile ground for researchers to get involved in that form. Nowadays, these forms of misgovernance and corruption have major macro implications. So that's a very important and relevant area, and that's why organizations like the IMF and others are getting involved in this, which they were not in the past.